So today, the Louisville police had shot an African man. Sorry about the lighting, but uh, the uh, Louisville police shot an African man in his 30s. They haven't released his name. And I'm not for sure, this isn't the video of the police's video. I guess they got video surveillance up throughout the city. Uh, but it's with the Smoker Smoke Shop. And this was provided by the Courier Journal, um, I believe. After the officer pulls up, he approaches the man to talk to him about the reported assault. Witnesses say the man was drunk, and in the video, he stumbles. He appears to get increasingly agitated with the officer, swinging his arms and eventually storming away. The officer follows the man, then reaches for his gun as he appears to radio back to dispatch. Suddenly, the man jets back into the frame, violently attacking the officer with a metal flagpole. He swings several times and appears to be after he physically hits the officer that the first shot is fired. The man hits the officer so hard that the flagpole breaks in half. He kept on the phone and all took two steps back to run the ball up from the top down. Sorry, twice hit the side and dropped him. The officer involved has not been identified. As part of LMPD protocol, he's been put on administrative leave while the public integrity unit investigates the deadly shooting. We are living in revolutionary times right now. Uh, Chris Hedges talks about how the revolution, he sees the revolution coming in America. So it's coming. Uh, but it's not inevitable. The victory of the revolution is an inevitable. A lot of the times, like if you took a look at the 1848 revolutions, where you had diffusion, lots of nations were uh, in turmoil and uh, wanted to change things. Uh, they had lost because the reactionaries actually took power and was able to uh, force the revolutionaries into submission. There was lots of reasons. The poor was split. Uh, the revolutionaries was able to get half of the poor, pay half of the poor to attack the other half. So the intelligentsia wasn't able to get the poor on their side. So this is a meme. It says, we now live in a nation where the doctors destroy health. Lawyers destroy justice, universities destroy knowledge, governments destroy freedom, the press destroys information, religion destroys morals, and our banks destroy the economy. So we're living in some revolutionary times right now. And there's not just, uh, you know, police brutality, but there's a military environment. America's been at war 222 years out of the 239 years since its existence. So we have been at war. We're a war society. It happened June 1st. A Louisville inmate dies after apparently hanging himself. It turns out there's lots of people who are dying in uh, Kentucky prisons. And so we're not a, a lot of Kentuckians are being shot by Kentucky cops, but even when they're in jail, even once they've grabbed a hold of them and have um, arrested them while they're in jail, they're also dying too. This guy hung himself. The conditions in the Louisville jail are really bad. Uh, this comes in the tail end of that one guy who had starved himself. So how do you just watch a man starve to death? The video footage of the fight that had precipitated uh, the McKinney sort of thing. This was the fight that had started it all uh, right here. So basically what happened was me and my sister and a few friends made a cookout and um, I basically, to sum it up, when I went to go get my key pass from someone, this lady was saying racial slurs to some friends that came to the cookout. What kind of slurs was she saying? She was, she was saying things such as black effort and that's why you live in Section 8 homes. I need to go back to my Section 8 home and stuff like that. So um, I said, excuse me, and then the other lady, her name's Kate, came up to me and she smacked me in my face. She actually That was Kate, to, white, to black? Kate's Caucasian. Caucasian, okay. And she went and she hit me in my face and that's when both of the women attacked me. Okay, and just for clarity, you live in this neighborhood, is Yes, that I live okay. in Craig Ranch. All right, most of the people that attend the event also live in yes. Craig Ranch, is that right? Okay. 
So I think it's best actually to pretty much watch the whole video in its entirety. I only cut like, you know, 20 seconds out of some, um, some lag time. Um, but this is the incident, so check it out. He has a flashlight. Oh, I got a flashlight, my nigga. Oh, shit. Oh, shit, bro. This nigga fell. Do you see him? Hey, hey, let me go give it to him. Let me no, go give it to him. No, 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 no. Hey, let me give it to him. I want to give it to him. Hey, it was his. It was his. No, no, no. It wasn't his. It wasn't his. It was his. Don't take off running when the cops get here. What's up, man? Oh, thank you. It was, it was Some that, guys, it was that, one of these Okay, guys, I appreciate it. None of them were involved. By okay, that's what I'm saying. They're, they're it was this guy's. It was that guy's. Whoa, well, sir. Get on the ground. Hold up, sir. I told you to stay. Get your ass is okay. down on the ground. Okay. 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 I didn't even do anything. I wasn't even in here. Yo, I wasn't even in here. Who is you? Georgie? I'm just by here, man. Hey, come on, man. What the heck? Sir, we just got here. Sir, we just came for a birthday party. Please. We'll figure it out now. Please, sir. <laughs> Yo, Richard, what color was it? It's navy blue. I know where it is. That's a baby. So right now you're staying. Don't make me fucking run around here with 30 pounds of goddamn gear on the sun because you want to screw around out here. Y'all keep standing there and run your mouths. You're going to go too. Get out of here. I already told you. I don't care. Leave. You're leaving now. You're leaving now. You are leaving now. Please. Leave. That way. Don't talk shit. Get your ass going. You need to talk to nobody. Keep running your mouth. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. You know what? Yo, Jelfer, what the fuck is going on? Why is he acting so crazy? Jesus, shit. He's fucking abusing her. He's putting on his gun on her. I have freedom of 
You know I didn't get your butts out of here. That's my, that's my cousin. He pulled out his gun on her. So you just did what everybody else did, and what everybody else did was illegal. You did it, and you got caught. They did it. Now you're sitting here paying for it. I just came. We just came from one I don't have a problem. That's not my problem. I asked y'all to sit. You became a part of the mob. You could have been the guys that were doing right, and you weren't. So now you're sitting here in trouble. You're gonna sit here until we get this figured out. Hey guys. He told me to keep walking. And I kept walking and then I'm guessing he thought we were saying rude stuff to him. And Moments later. <laughs> McKinney Police Corporal Eric Casebolt takes down 15 year old Dejeria Becton, an invited guest who says she was not involved in the fight. He grabbed me and he like twisted my arm um, on the back of my back and he shoved me in the uh, grass. And he started pulling the back of my braids and I was like telling him that he can get off me because my back was hurting really bad. A crowd notices and surrounds Case Bolt, prompting the supervisor to unholster his gun and point it at other party goers. He grabbed her arm to try to handcuff her and she was, she started resisting immediately and she should have just stopped at that point like anybody and sat down and put her hands behind her back and he said lie on the floor and she wouldn't. This woman who saw it all doesn't want her face shown because she claims those supporting Case Bolt are getting threats. Now there were no injuries, but one teen was arrested on charges of interference and evading arrest. Becton tells us it was a friend that was trying to push that police officer off of her. Staff at the Craig Ranch Community North Pool put up a sign this afternoon thanking McKinney Police, specifically the officers that responded that day, for keeping residents that live there safe. Uh, it's a story I'm sure we have certainly not heard the end of. Thank you, Zahid. And so we see this guy here. Supposedly he's getting mocked. He's been getting mocked because he was the one that had called the police uh, because of this pool party. Uh, we're seeing actually a lot of interesting things that had happened. Here we have the mainstream media said the video allegedly shows him pulling a gun on unarmed teens. It's video, so we totally see that he pulled the gun. Like, that did happen. So it's not alleged when you have video evidence of it. Here is uh, Heather Martin. She had said that all DFW area patriots lock and load and come counter protest to keep McKinney safe from lawless teens, race baiters, and cop haters. We need you now. Spread this far and wide. It's March for Justice, March Against Police Brutality, June 6, 2015, 6.30 p.m. So there's a March Against Police Brutality, but Heather Martin, she is standing strong, and she is saying, no, we are in favor of police brutality. Um, you know, uh, blue-eyed, 
blonde. This would be one of Hitler's favorites. So both of these are extreme racist. I think you could take a more nuanced approach to the entire uh, uh, incident. If you look at the police chief said that the guy did wrong. So there's 11 other police officers that was on the scene that did not act, you know, just like uh, Billy Badass and um, cussing at everybody and doing barrel rolls and just acting crazy. Uh, but it, it strikes me as, you know, just a bunch of racist, uh, you know, backwards ass pieces of shit. And um, it's, they know they're racist, but they want to say that everybody else is a bunch of race baiters. And, um, and then they want to say they're cop haters, a bunch of cop haters. There is a Texas teacher. She was let go. Okay. The woman who started, there's a lot, there's several people that was actually fired over this, but this woman, she was just ranted on Facebook. So this Texas teacher, a Texas elementary school teacher, fourth grade, she was ranting and she sat there and she was saying, so it looks like Karen uh, Fitzgibbons or something. She says, this makes me angry. This officer should not have had to resign. I'm going to just go ahead and say it. The blacks are the ones causing the problems and this racial tension. I guess that's what happens when you flunk out of school and have no education. I'm sure their parents are just as guilty for not knowing what their kids were doing or knew it and didn't care. I'm almost to the point of wanting them all segregated on one side of town so they can hurt each other and leave the innocent people alone. Right? White people are the innocent people. Maybe the 50s and 60s were really on to something. Now let the bashing of my true and honest opinion begin. Um, and I'm not a racist. I'm sick of them causing trouble. So, you know, this, uh, Karen Gibbons, you know, she clearly is saying a bunch of racist stuff and, uh, is saying, you know, white people are completely innocent. He shouldn't have had to resign. And, uh, she deservedly got fired. I mean, not only did she defend the police officer, but she took it a step farther and she said, that she wanted, uh, that we should go back to segregation, right? We should go back before uh, the 1964 Civil Rights Act. This is a fourth grade teacher. A fourth grade teacher is teaching our children. And I wonder if there's actually black kids in her school. And that would be, you know, that would be very disturbing. The school was right in firing her. The woman who had started the fight, who had said, um, go back to Section 8 housing and, you know, black effort. Uh, she had got fired, but also the principal. Now, I thought this was pretty uh, fascinating because this guy, you know, he reminds me of the principal at Cloverport that I had got into an argument with. He says, you need to leave or else there's going to be trouble. And I got up to leave and then I asked him, like, you want to you go ahead and step outside? So he could go ahead and threaten me and uh, insult my dignity, but when I uh, accept his challenge, right, I mean, he's yelling, carrying on, acting like a fool, um, after lying several times, so he gets up, and he's menacing, yelling, and carrying on, and I did what he wanted, but even though I did what he wanted, it wasn't good enough, you know, him yelling, attacking my dignity, I went ahead and, uh, you know, uh, accepted his challenge, but he's actually a poltroon, he's a poltroon, he's a coward, and he just stood there looking real stupid. But he looks identical to him. So I wouldn't uh, put it past him that he might even defend the police's brutality in this incident. The cop came on the scene very crazily. So the school principal was suspended. And then so was this uh, woman who had instigated the fight. So they weren't fired. But that teacher who said we should just, just go back to segregation. Well, that's uh, taking it a whole nother step. So just a couple of other things. Um, government itself does no harm because it's a fictional entity. But the belief in government, the notion that some people actually have the moral right to rule over others, uh, has caused immeasurable pain and suffering, injustice and oppression, enslavement and death. And that's absolutely right. Oppression, hierarchy, the oppressors versus the oppressed. Because one group of people think that another group of people is less than them. And that's where a lot of the uh, injustices come from. It makes me think about the uh, argument, uh, the, um, the species argument. 
the species argument is the one that actually says that because we think animals are beneath us, that's where all the pain and suffering in the entire world come from. And while I think that there is an argument there, I do believe we're better than the animals. Um, but this is government. So this is human. Some humans think that they're better than us. So it's actually a defense of anarchism. And then we have here. So, I mean, this, this stuff just goes on every day. There's always something coming up. The, the video here, this lady, she had got fondled and molested when she had got searched in the back room. She comes in and tells the judge, who's a female judge, that she had got molested and she had got raped. And then uh, the police officer says, let's arrest him. Actually, it's not this guy. It was another guy. But he ordered this guy, hey, hey, Bob, you need to go ahead and arrest her right now. And so, you know, he was oppressing him and Bob went ahead and arrested her. And uh, for telling the truth, eventually she gets vindicated like two years later. But I remember seeing this video because you see the two-year-old toddler. The two-year-old toddler was sitting there talking to the judge. And then eventually he's, uh, she is telling uh, the police officer, don't take my mama away. And so, I mean, this, is just, uh, this stuff is just outrageous. Uh, the last outrageous thing I'm going to point out is the secret debate between Conway and Matt Bevin. Um, vote, I mean, Drew Curtis seems like he's on track to actually becoming a candidate. Vote for Drew Curtis. He's like, the, the hands down, better than these two fools. They went ahead at a secret debate where they basically pledged their allegiance to King Cole, to the coal industry. Uh, people voted for Mitch McConnell because he talked about coal, but Mitch McConnell didn't parse out what he actually was talking about. He would have been on the side of the gun thugs. He's on the side of the coal operators, not the coal miners and not the consumers who's having to pay a 200 and, um, plus percent markup. Three cent kilowatt hours is how much uh, our coal is being sold to Pennsylvania Power and Light. Then they're turning around and selling it back to us at 10 cents a kilowatt hour. We're not saving any money being a coal state and there's no more coal miners unions. So when they pledge their allegiance to the coal industry, they are pledging allegiance to the coal operators, to Pennsylvania Power and Light, which owns, you know, quote unquote, Kentucky Utilities. And they are, you know, not in favor of nationalizing. Basically, they are on the side of the gun thugs. And uh, Drew Curtis came out real strong against them. Uh, and, you know, he should be, once he gets his signatures, he should be included in all the debates. And if they don't do it, I think that'll actually be to their own peril. He could call them cowards, say that they don't want to actually debate them. And, you know, we'll see how that goes. So, lots of stuff that's going on. Again, you know, let's end it off with the Chris Hedges quote. We live in a nation where doctors destroy the health, lawyers destroy justice, universities destroy knowledge, governments destroy freedom, the press destroys information, religion destroys morals, and our banks destroy the economy.